save Lady Travels. I'll take his hood up and begin to ride through the forest, not really following a path, just sort of into it. Bree doesn't even think to ask about the whole sun thing. And she just, like, sits there, like, on the horse. And her eyes... Watch him go. And then look down at her horse. And then look over at the trees. The horse begins to eating a, a, a bit of grass over here. And at the grass the horse is eating... And she has been thrown way out of the anger she had just to be, like, initially just built for herself today. And she uh, is going to sit there for a while All right. until she can uh, gain some semblance of composure enough to go back to her room without uh, attracting attention. We move back to Night Song. It has been the vigil. You've all stood it. You're likely all tired, hungry, and especially thirsty. You've endured the harsh red mountain sun, even in winter, uncomfortably warm. The pain and exhaustion you've felt, however, has cemented this thing in your mind. It is a thoroughly unpleasant experience. Quiet, no sleep, rest, nothing. When the sun sets once more, Lord Karen speaks. We have stood our vigil, and we have duty from which we cannot be swayed any longer. Let the memory of he who fought and died for the realm never be forgotten, but be for now laid to rest. He will take sort of a, a step, and then he will he will sink into his knees. Basically, his his better man moving to assist him in his frailty. It seems that there's been probably even harshest on him, though. Lainus is definitely not feeling great. They will begin to make their way down. Desm and Nima will know that there's been prepared basically a meal with with uh, water and bread. Uh, for you all to gather after the vigil. Mm -hmm. Sure, yes. The meal is quiet as people are exhausted. Uh, though Lord Karen will manage to say that perhaps on the morrow, tomorrow evening, when people have rested, we can speak of the matters at hand. Okay. That is basically what happens. You rest, sleep finally, get some attention paid to your those of you who might have like like sunburns really from from the day in the heat, or or have some wound that has opened up due to the uh, to the harsh cold, and just the exchange of temperature being great. The next day. You will be invited to a room. Where you will see the three Lords of Karen seated. Lord Karen is sitting, though his posture suggests that Nimia can sit down as well. It's probably going to be some time. Uh, but his posture suggests that he might want to have been standing for this. She is okay. She does not want to sit. Oh. All right. It's fine. As he looks at you, slightly pained. He has a he has a sort of a cane to walk with now. Perhaps yesterday's vigil really took a lot out of him. 
Yeah, I would imagine. Jesus. I am Lord Pierce Karen of Nightsong. I'm the Lord of the Marshes, and you, my vassals, have been summoned here for the funeral of my heir, who died under your command. His eyes weigh heavily on you. This will be an opportunity for you to return the favor you owe me for the life that my son gave you. In addition, your house is sworn to obey me in matters of war and conflict, and your house has always previously honored this oath. I shall expect you all to do this now as well. Although battle has not yet started, a war can be said to have begun as soon as the armies are lining up. I shall start, then, with a more simple question. You have raised another for the title of Lord of the Marshes, my title, the title of your liege. You have supported someone who would contend to usurp it from me. Why? Dasim looks at him and says, My lord, it is true that uh, we are indeed sworn to you and your house. And we have been, uh, we have been so for a very long time. It is also true that we, in the sudden bid for power in the marshes, did what we could to undermine one of your greatest rivals in the marshes. The, uh, I am sure that you are familiar, my lord, with the allegations uh, leveled against you and how they were phrased at the tournament on our lands. Give you a curt nod. And the allegations, uh, as far as I know, are have merit in that that the rules pertaining to my lord's particular office is quite clear. It is required of the Lord of the Marshes to be able to ride into battle. If he cannot, there's some size. He shakes his head, I, as I said, my lord, I take no pleasure in this, believe me. But when Lord Peak rose up to try to claim your title after your mysterious sickness that we um, managed to stave off. We had little choice. If it were up to me and my wishes, and my wishes shaped your reality, my lord, I would much have preferred that Lord uh, House Karen remained Lords of the Marshes. Not slyly looking to his people. But if the rules are what they are, if House Karen is unable to do this by the rules that govern the land, then we had to move to undermine the most obvious and most harmful adversary that we have in the marshes. Lord Peak is ambitious, has always been. And the uh, relations between his house and ours have always been strained as well. Under the circumstances, my lord, it was the only thing we could do. It was either that or lay down and let Lord Peak have his way. Dark, are you here? Okay. He will, uh, he will basically look at you and say, uh, 
It indeed seems that I'm destined to lose what I had from my father then. But even if the title leaves the name of my house, I have still sworn to protect this realm from those that would threaten it, threaten it and I intend to continue doing so. Discuss a little bit. Since the laws of the marshes, you understand, are not easily controlled. Lord Peak would be great proof of that. He has, however, not dared to oppose me openly. He knows the reputation of my house. No song so sweet, as he looks to Venus. No art so great, no purpose so true. Should I call now, I expect even he would rally to my banner. Says, the threat is here. It is from dawn. And I doubt that these two potential new contenders would understand that or care for it. The title is not just prestige. It has the weight of authority. You saw the faces of my ancestors, of my son. They are there to remind me, us, of what it costs us to carry this duty that we were given so many, many years ago. Every single one has died protecting this past, this realm, from those that would invade it and harm it. That is our purpose as Lords of the Marshes. I've called you here to have your assistance, I suppose I should say. You have always served loyally, and I believe you want to do what is right and what is best. What I ask for you, of you, however, is no small thing. The king will call, for war is coming, and when he does, I want you to forsake him. When the call comes to join and carry your troops north to gather for a grand army, I want you to not go. You should not join his armies, you should stay at home. For this, you will be condemned as rebels by both of those who would claim the crown. But that is the price for doing the duty of the marshes. He looks at you seriously. For when war is burning across the kingdoms, a threat will show itself fully. These vultures of the Red Mountains, we have skirmished much with them in the last year, and they grow ever stronger and ever bolder. When the armies are gone, and all the men are needed far away to the north, they will strike, taking out the marshes, sacking Highgarden, claiming this land of the mountains as their own. Before whoever wins this war can turn their attention to this area, the vultures will be entrenched, and either peace will be made and they will gain this land, or a bitter hundred-year-long fight will, be in, will take place in the very land around us. The people and these lands will die from such a conflict. When the king would call for you, had I been Lord of the Marshes then, I would have done the same. I would have called you and had you all rally here to stand vigil over the prince's pass. We would break their attack and counterattack into the mountains as we have done before. We would there poison the wells and burn down their holds then we would find those responsible for this banditry, this banded army, and we would bring them to justice. No matter who would have won this war, we would have done, we would have done our duty, and they would respect it. We are, after all, before all else we might be, the lords of the marshes. Should we elect this boy of Selmy, then I will need to know that he will not ride out as the glory-hungry fool he is to join whatever side promises, the, promises him the greater reward for his service. I might still sway some lords to stay home and here, 
But this battle against this coming army might turn a whole lot more bitter should our forces be a fighting amongst themselves. Looks at you. So I ask you then, what would you have me do? Vote for someone I know cannot fulfill the duty, or someone I know could, but doesn't want to. Those appear to be the choices that have been presented. <sighs> Does some frowns deeply. Well, in that case, uh, my lord, it seems to be a choice of whether or not you can sway the one unwilling or teach the one unable. The one unable is to be taught able. And do you think you would be capable of such a thing in such a short time? To make him accept an inglorious betrayal of his liege lord, the king. For he would have no apology. He could not hide behind being called upon by the Lord of the Marshes. Would he stay behind, gather troops, and send them here to defend the Prince's Pass, as my family has done for so long? Would he go and find bandits, while two glorious armies battle for the kingship of this land? Do you think you can convince him to do such a thing? I don't know, my lord. I simply don't. It is... It would be to act against his very nature, that is true. And uh, in all honesty, I am not sure that could be easily done. Uh, he is... It would be easier for us to talk to, at least, than Lord Peak, who would rather shoot us on, on sight, I believe. If it is up to us, my lord, if it is, in your mind, a question about probability, it is my belief that we can at least approach and talk to Lord Selmy without having steel being drawn. As if he is going to listen in the end? I really could not say. He is hot-headed, he is young, and he is hungry for glory and power. Excuse me, what were you saying the last thing? Yeah, the Lord Selmy is hungry for glory and power. Yeah. Um, but I don't, I wouldn't recognize him as a complete fool. The problem then, my lord, seems to be the question of said threat and army. We have certainly felt the vultures ourselves. That is why I have brought you here. I believe you are the ones who might believe me on my word alone. My people, he looks to uh, Timos, have seen it or know of it. She looks to, uh, to Reich. What do you and your people know of the vultures, my lord? There are many of them. More than I believe this mountain chain, mountain, the mountains could sustain. They have support from outside, most likely the other Dornish lords in the mountains area. I'm sure we will find out who is with them once we take them down. It would need a strong effort to push into the mountains, and not one that many would come back from. To find wells and poison them would mean that we could not use them ourselves on our return trip. But we would exterminate this threat. I have also tried to look into the vultures a little bit, but it is difficult. I agree that they are seemingly very well organized. They managed to get a large, very well equipped force deep into martial territory to strike at us which would include either that they are incredibly skilled at navigating our lands or that they have help. They are well-funded. Yes, The Red Adder specifically was 
uh, dressed up in an armor that I believe was as much a um, piece of extravagant artwork as it was armor. He sort of glances over to Alaric. Alaric nods. Not a per- That's some nonsense. Not a purchase done by someone without resources. I also know of a famous smith who seemed to have disappeared close to the uh, Red Mountains. Given the quality of the Red Addis armor, I would hazard guess that the smith is either willingly or forcefully helping the, the vultures. Given the cost of said armor, yes, well funded indeed. That's... They are many, and they are well funded, and attacking them now would be nigh impossible. It is therefore we must wait until they come down, when the war has been well begun. That is why we must forsake the call to arms. The threat seems unbelievably real to those who have not experienced it. But I believe that you have in some fashion. You were involved in striking down a house that I believe was very much supporting of it. Yes. Yes, it is very risky. Because if we move in force, even if we can sway the martial lords to gather and move in force, might be viewed by some as a declaration of war against Dorne. We would truly spark them into 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 moving. Yes. I I suppose then the first thing to do would be to make sure that Lord Peak is not the one elected. If you believe that this Selmy can be taught, then I shall accept that as fact, simply because I do not have much of an other idea of what to do in the situation. I am rarely stumped in this way. I should wish then for Lord Selmy to stay behind and for the other martial lords to do the same under his order and command. Doesn't they will come here first, and they will strike at Night Song, for they have to, if they wish to move a true army. When they have done so, says, we shall hold out, and hopefully, what of the Lord Martial Lords that come will be enough to relieve us. If not, then at least... We died doing our duty. Does some nods. Yes, my lord. Uh, I can certainly say that I can try my best to talk to Lord Selby uh, about this. It is... Um, if it is between him, him and Peak, and if you want us to act as your... Uh, on... on, on on this particular matter, then, yes, Selmy is the one we can reach. I would speak to him myself, but I cannot travel. Not in my condition. My men do not know him. Next to the two. And I do not have a vote, for I cannot lead men myself. Next says, I will, however, do something that might be unexpected. He looks to... Uh, Lord Macon and say, I will, with the power, Lord of the Marshes, grant Lord Wrythe the full power of a Lord of the Marshes, making him your equals, as my bannerman under that title. He can lead men, and he does have access to mine. I shall grant him enough permanent troops under his service that he will be able to field the required numbers. He will therefore get a vote. Okay. 
Out that of would character. break the... Would that break the deadlock? Yeah, we're out of character. That With Swan and Wrythe, that would mean that we're up one on peak. All together, I think. So the only way that he could possibly win at this point is if he breaks up all three of his castles in, like between his son and grandson. That's the only way that he can at this point, I believe. Oh. If I've counted, been counting it right, because Pete's got one... Uh, Probably two. Uh, well, yeah. If we take Trant away from him, then we win. Depends on how well Benicia. I would send a letter to Lord Selmy. However, I believe Lord Selmy is currently with some company that might not take a liking to this preparation for war. Yes. The uh, Hand of the King is currently visiting his lands. And, um, and yes, his presence is certainly felt. Then, should you? Do you have anything else to ask me or say? I have set my peace. I... It is, I am weary and tired. I... He sort of just breathes and says, I shall need some time alone. Longer than what the vigil has given me so far. I thank you for your presence. Suddenly, he seems like a much more broken man mm -hmm. in spirit. Uh, do we have anything particular to tell him? Um, nothing comes to mind straight up at the moment. Seems very aware of most things, honestly. Anyone would have anything else to add? I can't think of any. All right. Um, I suppose that it is, uh, that's it for now then. Yes. I would presume if uh, Lord Karen has nothing else, we would I mean, end up. I mean, he could oh, yeah. perhaps, uh, if he has any, uh, and a pull with Lord Peasbury because he's sort of on the fence as well. Um, he might want to try to sway him to sell me side in that case. Mm -hmm. uh, or at least nudge him towards that. Um, because we, you know, we want to be. If Selmy is going to take over, we want him to be. I have a, as a, a clear victory as possible. Yeah. And uh, any other influence he could make, like if, you know, we were on our way to Lord Peacebury when all of this went down, so it's, um, we, we didn't really make it there. <laughs> no. I presume we sent, uh, we sent a raven saying, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a, a bit of a problem. <laughs> We, uh, uh, you know, stuff and everything. See you later. Yeah. Uh, but if Lord Karen has any uh, has any particular pull uh, with Lord Peacebury, perhaps that could be uh, could be something to look in looked into. I shall send him a letter, though I have no daughters to offer him. Well, not one that I'm willing to offer him. <laughs> mm. Mm. 
I think that's the problem with half the uh, march this time. Get to it, Alaric. It's <laughs> helped out. Just then. I shall await ravens if there is more you require. But due to the threat from the door, from the south, I shall attempt to keep my vigil. Demos, she looks at him. You have the command. I would want you to leave immediately to secure the border. Demos nods and bows to you and then takes his leave. Oh. Hmm. Well, does someone want to get up? Bow formally. My lord. Then uh, we will also begin to take our leave. Yeah. Sure. Dark follows suit. And I presume Lanus does. I don't know what's happened to Dark. Yeah. But... I presume he as well. Yeah. You um, and the internet and all. Yeah, but you begin to trek your way back, basically. Huzzah! Back home. Uh, hey, how will Bree be handling her uh, her days before the others come back? Oh. Well, there is uh, something that uh, Bree would do involving uh, the Lord of the House. All right. Uh, Bree, uh, for the first time, would attempt to seek him out and gain audience wherever you might be, perhaps the study or what have you. Sure, we can find him in the study. Hmm. Neat. Where is... Oh, I'm still in the forest. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Like a, a rap on the door, then. Sure. Well, we'll open it. Sister. Uh, Bree will uh, look up uh, and uh, lock eyes uh, with the lore of the house and say, Brother, in my uh, confusion and... Uh, Wasting away as I was, I did stay behind on the behalf of Uncle in case you returned to inform you of events. It is uh, my regret that I failed to fulfill that duty in my state, and I hope to make up for it now. Do not worry, sister, as he moves a hand to sort of rest on her shoulder. It is not your fault that you were not well enough educated to understand your duty. I will make sure to mention this to your teacher. Yes. Well, that begins with the near-death experience your family had while traveling to Lord Peasbury. Sir Alaric was nearly slain, as was my dance instructor, as was Sir Alaric's squire, the heir of House Karen, as nearly was I, as nearly was uncle, we were ambushed by vultures, snakes from dawn, led by the Red Adder, an exile from House Will. We failed in our mission to House Peasbury, for we were nearly slain and had to retreat back home to receive the maester's attention. I have lain in bed for some time, as did Alaric, as did my instructor, my lord. I see. I shall speak to our uncle once he returns and hear his version of the story. But I thank you for readying me for the topic. Yes. My uncle and Sir Alaric and Lanus and my dance instructor all traveled to see House Karen to return his fallen son to him and bury him appropriately. Also, the Hand of the King will be visiting, sometime within the next moon. I do not know his exact date. Lord <laughs> Halen frowns. He's like, he specifically, I see. He specifically requested for Uncle. I do not know what any of this means, but perhaps he is interested in Uncle's artwork, my lord. <laughs> Seems that I would have been gone for too long. For these things that have happened in my absence might have been prevented had I been there. I shall think on this. 
Also, Perhaps. my lord, we owe an immense debt <laughs> to the Iron Bank, it seems. A total of 1,300 gold crowns. I do not know whether Lanus informed you of this. This came up during the council meeting while, meetings while you were absent. I thought you should know in preparation for discussing that with Uncle and Sir Alaric. It seems to involve the Lannisters, too. I am unsure of such political maneuverings. Uh, perhaps my future teacher will inform me of such things. <laughs> oh, the vitriol. Taken back a little bit and says, <laughs> I shall be sure to ask your uncle of this when he returns. Thank you, sister. Perhaps it would be time for you to aid in the kitchens. To take your mind off these hard things. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, shit. You've been sent to the kitchens? Bree, uh, smiles does her best curtsy bow that she learned from Agatha ever so long as says, it would be my pleasure to serve the house, my lord. Such political matters are not to be trifled by a woman's fragile mind. And she will spin and walk away. <laughs> and frowns at you. Standing in the door, just sort of looking a little bit. Returning. Brie then, uh, as like she gets in the stairs, she starts like grinning and chuckling because she wants to know how the servants are going to fucking react when she shows up in the kitchen offering to help. Oh, Lord commanded it. I must be here. Oh, oh this is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was great. That was. It's gonna, a ball. it's gonna create so much shit in character, but out of character is beautiful and brilliant. I love it. <laughs> Hey, 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 Dark, glad to hear you. You're around for this. <laughs> yeah, I, I come back to this. This is one hell of a bomb. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Bree, Bree was like, all right, fine. What if I can play this? What if, what if I can play this shit with me? Well, here's what you missed by the by, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> here's all the problems you are now supposed to solve. Ah, damn. Oh. I didn't mention, I, I would have mentioned Deep Well Keep, but he dismissed her, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, on the bright side, I am actually. Yes, in one sense, I am glad Lainus isn't there because you've got to do this. Yeah, that's uh, that's too beautiful. As for that, uh, Bree, uh, then until the others return, won't seek her lord out. Uh, she will be busy basically spinning away for how she is going to broach this with her uncle first and then with Nini. Because uh, she's trying to construct the situation in a way that doesn't give up Blood Raven and also doesn't make her sound crazy. Mm. She's not finding it right now, but she thinks she has a chance. <laughs> she will also wait for Rosette's letter should she finish pinning one for her to hand to Uncle. <laughs> uh.